Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 2D tutorial series where we're taking a look at all the basics you need to make your own awesome 2D platformer game full of platforming goodness. So in the last episode we started making a level select system for the game and we showed how to unlock levels as you go through the game and also how to show the player which levels are unlocked. So this time out we're going to take a look at how to move the player around on the level select screen and how to open certain levels and not be able to open any levels that are locked so the player can't reach them. So now we go to levels, we go back to our level select here, save this, and now we've got a little bit more code to write. So basically, we have um, we have a way of showing whether our levels are locked or unlocked, and that's, that's kind of the basis of what we want to do. But now we want to be able to switch between those levels and open a level, obviously, to load it up and continue on with your game. So what we're going to use for that is we're going to be want to be able to know where the position of the player underneath the icons is. So what we'll do is public uh, we could use an array of positions or we could actually use the, the positions based on the locks that we have already. So we know the locks are all in the dead center of these things. So maybe it'll be an idea to use them as a uh, base our position off being directly below the locks. So that's what we'll do. Uh, so we we'll go back in here. Um, but we do want to create a way of keeping track of which level we're uh, actively selecting at the moment. So we'll do public int uh, position selector. And that'll basically tell us which position we're at. Uh, we want a, a new array for the names of the levels that we want to load up. So public string, an array of strings. Oh no, square brackets. Public string level name. So that'll be the names of the levels that we're going to load. Um, we want a speed for whether we're moving between stuff, so that'll be public float move speed. And then finally we're going to create a bool here called is pressed. And this will be used for us to determine whether the player has pressed a button, because we don't want the player to press a button to move to the right and then it just goes flying along all the way through all the options. Say if you have like 20 levels and the player presses right, you don't want them to immediately go all the way to 20. You want them to be able to press a button, it moves on one, then when he lets go, it doesn't it resets basically and he presses again, then it'll move on again. So that's what we're how we're what we're using an is pressed button here. So we've got our position selector, and basically at the start of the game we want or at the start of the uh, the the level select screen loading, we want to set the position of the player straight away. So what we'll do is um We'll go transform that position. So that'll be the position of the player object, which is what we're starting off with. Uh, and we will go to level. Uh, no, no, we will say uh, locks, isn't it? Yeah, locks. Uh, and we want to choose which, which of the locks is active for us at the moment. And the one that'll be will be based on our position selector. So locks position se oops, selector oh. and what we're going to do is take the position of that locks position selector dot oh sorry dot transform that position plus new vector tree and basically within this vector we're going to say so our x value is the same and we want to have it below the, the position of the lock so we'll say minus 3f and we'll say 0 again actually rather than minus 3f we'll have a value for how far it is below uh, so we'll say a public float here and we'll say distance below lock and then here we'll say I don't know if we can just maneuver things properly be handy. So here we'll say this uh, distance below lock. Perfect. So now we'll save this and just to demonstrate that this is working, we'll go back into the game here. Once it finishes the compiling, we'll be able to set the distance that we wanted to go. 
We also want to set our move speed as well. We might as well set that now, just for the future, just so we we don't like accidentally set things going really slow. So we just set the move speed to twenty, just so it's it's there. Uh, our distance below our lock, we will set it to minus three. Uh, and we also want to set the names of our levels that we're going to load. We might as well set that now. So here we have level one, level two, and level three. We know they're the levels we want. So we just go level one, level. Oh no, we're going somewhere else now. Level two and level three. Perfect. So now if we hit play. As you can see, maybe minus 3 is a little bit too far down. We want a little bit closer than that, so we'll say minus 2. This is why, this is why you want to be able to make it editable within the editor itself, rather than being hard-coded in. So there we go. Level 2, that's just down far enough, I think. So, perfect. So now we want to be able to switch between those, uh, so that the player um, can move between things and be able to load his levels. So... What we want to have is we want to have that the player object is always moving to whatever is the active uh, position. So we'll say, here we'll say transform dot position is equal to vector tree dot move towards. So what this will do is make sure it'll always moving towards a certain point. So our, will you, as you can see in the little pop up thing that pops up here. We have current, target, and max distance delta. And current is the position we're at now. Target is where we want to go. And the max distance delta is basically the speed of how quickly it's going to go. So here we'll say uh, our current position is just transform. Transform dot position. The place we want to go to is uh, our... Basically the exact same bit of code we've got here. Is where we want to go to because we always want to move to the next position of the the where the position sector is we always want to go to the, where that lock is and finally the speed we want to go is our move speed that we've set if it would detect the right object it doesn't seem to want to but anyway our move speed multiplied by time dot delta time and we want to multiply by time dot delta time because uh, for example if you've got a very slow system it would move slower but if you got a very very fast computer it would move super duper fast between objects and we want to be consistent for everybody playing the game so now it'll move between those at different things so just to demonstrate that if we go back in here and once it compiles down gonna hit play here So now if we set this to 1, there you go, he'll move to 1. If we set it to 2, he'll move to 2. If we set it to 3, it'll break our, our thing, basically. Uh, so we know that we can't move beyond the, the length of the array. So now if we go back here, back into the game. So now we want to be able to switch between those things. So to start off, with, we know the player won't have pressed anything. So we, we know that we're safe to say if nothing is pressed... So our, no sorry, if not is pressed, so if our press button hasn't been used, we're going to do a little bit of stuff in here. And down here, we're also going to have another function for if is pressed is true. Uh, and so here we go. Okay, so if nothing is pressed, then we know that the, we're waiting for the player to press something. So here we can detect some movement. So if input dot get access horizontal, so that determines our left and right movement basically. So if that is greater than say 0.25, then we know the player is pressing to the right. So then we know that we should make the position selector be moving to the right. So that basically just position selector plus plus equals one. And we also know that we've pressed something now, so is pressed is equal to true. So now as long as the player holds that button down, 
holds write down, then we know we, it, the is press has been set to true, so it won't be able to access this bit, bit of code again. So it won't be able to move the position selector any more than it already has. And we're basically going to do the exact same thing for if we press uh, a left. So we're just going to do this, paste it in there, and basically instead of greater than 0.25, it's less than minus 0.25. And our position selector will be equal to minus one. So that's fine. But we don't want our position selector, like we saw a second ago, we don't want it going too far to the right or too far to the left. So basically, as we saw, our position selector became, when it became three, that meant it was gone too far beyond the edge of it. So what we want to do is say, if position selector is greater than, oh no, I've gone too wrong there. Is greater than or equal to uh, level tags dot length. So basically, we have our level tags array back up here, and we know we've made that tree long with three objects in it. So basically, it'll say, okay, if our position selector is greater than three, if it somehow managed to get to four or five, it shouldn't be able to do that. But if for some crazy reason it did, or if the position selector is at three exactly, then we know we've gone too far and we can't use that. So basically all you do then is say position position selector is equal to level tags dot length minus one. So what that'll do is it'll go, okay, we've gone way too far. So obviously our position selector should be back at three minus one, which is two. And the other option, of course, is if the position selector has gone to less than zero, which is our starting point. If it's less than zero for any reason, then we just say position selector is equal to zero. So we'll save that. And just to demonstrate that this is working, go back into the game here, wait for it to compile. And then once it's finished, we're going to hit play. And now, once it goes, there we go. So now, if we hit right, we can see our position selector here is zero. If we hit right, there we go, move to one. But we can't switch back or forth because we haven't set how to determine whether the button isn't pressed anymore. Because now we've pressed the button and it's, if we, if we go to debug mode here, we can see is pressed is true, but there's nothing to tell is pressed to go back from true. So that's obviously not what we want to happen. So we'll switch back to normal here. We go back in. And now in this in this function here, basically what we want to do is say if the player basically lets go of any direction. So if input.getAxis horizontal is less than minus, or sorry, not minus, is less than 0.25f. So basically here we're saying if the player's pressing right is when it's greater than 0.25f. Uh, so basically we want to say, okay, so we want to determine that the player is not pressing right and not pressing left. So if it's less than the value where it's pressing right, and also if it is, if we just copy this bit here, if it's greater than minus 0.25f like that. Basically then we know it's between the range where it's the player isn't pressing anything. So now we know, okay, so the player isn't pressing anything anymore. So we can say is pressed is equal to false. So we'll save that, go back in here. And once it compiles once again, we'll actually set this on debug mode again just so we'll be able to see the is press value down here. So now we'll press play. We can go to the right, we can go left, right, just like that, perfect, just what we want. And if you watch the is press value, so I'm gonna hold right here. So now we're holding right, but it's staying, it's staying pressed, so it's not going, okay, oh, we can just move on to the next one whenever we want. So it'll wait, wait for the player to, press the button to move between the different objects. And if we keep pressing right here, it won't go on beyond position two. And if we keep pressing left here, it won't go beyond position zero. So that's perfect. That's just what we want to do. But of course we want to be able to load our levels. So if we go back in here now, 
we're going to add <clears throat> one more little bit of code down the bottom here which again is relatively straightforward basically what we're going to do is say if the player uses either the action button or the jump button and um, it'll load the next level so we'll say if input dot get button down uh, fire one is what we've used for the action button or which is our two little bars there or input dot get button down this one here get button down jump because those are pretty much the two most common buttons that people would use for selecting anything so if either of those things are true and then also if level unlocked which is what determines whether each one of these levels is unlocked or not if level unlocked at the position we're currently on which is position selector so if that's true so basically if the level is unlocked then we can go application dot load level uh, and we'll pull from our level name a string of uh, array of strings that we create up here we'll pull from that and we'll say level name at position selector again and we'll say that so basically what that'll do is it'll load the level that we're our position selector is currently on so we'll save this we'll pop back in here wait for it to compile And then once it's finished, we'll press play. And now we can switch between these levels. If we go over to level three here, nothing should happen when you press any buttons. That's perfect. But if we go to level two, here we go, we're straight into level two, which for some reason we left the player starting in the middle of the level there. That's not exactly what we want, but that's okay. Uh, so now if we go over to level three, put your exit here. Oh, we've unlocked level three. We can go straight over here. And we can move on and play through our, our extra levels and do whatever the hell we want. So there you go. That's the basics. And we can also, of course, we can go straight back to our level select here, just like this. Um, huh. Well, that's interesting. For some reason, when I went back to the level select here, we're not able to switch positions. That is very strange. I don't know why that's happening. But that'll be something that I will solve before the next episode because we've got a couple more things we want to do we want to be able to uh, use this as a touchscreen device so to be able to tap on one two or three to be able to load our levels um, and we also want to be able to remember the position of the player when you exit the level so that's what we're going to look at next time but for now we're done with the basic elements of setting up this level select here in the game so thanks for watching everybody i will of course be back with more tutorial goodness soon but in the meantime make sure you go and check out the port knots kickstarter campaign for yourself and help support the making of the game and help support this tutorial series also so thanks for watching and i'll see you very soon